So we are starting our session six, and this is on the Internet of Things. Uh, we have a number of very interesting presentations. Um, the first one being uh, from uh, Hongyan Wan from ETH Zurich, and uh, her presentation is entitled Framework Towards Decentralized Autonomous Space. So it's a pleasure to have you here. Um, and thank you very much for coming along. And uh, I look forward to your presentation. Hello, everyone. My name is Hong Yang, and you, you can also call me Yuna. I recently started my PhD at ETH Chair of IC with Professor Daniel Hall. My research topic is a framework of decentralized autonomous space. Um, and I started exploring blockchain and concept of DAO about a year ago with my master's thesis. In this presentation, I will present you the work done in the past year and how I see my research going in the next years. Um, without further ado, let's start with the background of this, um, of this project. Um, since the concept is very new and I understand that it might be confusing, so I would like to start explaining how this project started and the originality of the idea. Um, we really initiate the project with two thoughts in mind. Uh, first is to implement DAO in the built environment. Uh, second, which is a bit more complex topic, Natural 2.0. Uh, in short, the concept of Natural 2.0 developed upon smart contract and this capability of holding foundings in its addresses. This simple concept enables self-owning entity. The blockchain uh, do not differentiate between human agency or non-life uh, machinery agency. So we call this self-owned entities, no one's one, represent that it belongs to no one but itself. Uh, combining a network of self-owning entities um, with the power of DAO, we formulate the concept of DOS decentralized autonomous space. And but what then is really DOS? First, we position DOS among six fields, which are Internet of Things, decentralized ledger technology, uh, decentralized autonomous organizations, and the built environment. Um, though AI and machine learning are highly relevant to the subject, but it's not pursued in this work at, as they're not our expertise. And then we defined um, three basic uh, components of DAS, which are the governance, the building itself, and its building system. And these three components then further achieved by three technologies. The governance is achieved by blockchain, and then the building is designed through discrete design uh, methodology. And the building system, the electrical system, is achieved by Internet of Things. This detailed functionality of each three pillars is then defined as following. Blockchain-enabled governance will in charge decision-making and value allocation processes, um, discrete design methodology, designs the, uh, the construct, uh, construct and design the building, and the system will be operated and maintained by the IoT system. After conceptualizing DOS, then I asked what would be the steps for developing DOS framework? The first steps uh, are exploring all three pillars, the governance, building, and system, and then establish a basic technical framework and build a proof of concept prototype that including all basic functionalities. And these are the steps that already been achieved and they will be presented in detail later. Then with the established achievement, what will be the next steps? So with the established prototype, the next reasonable steps would be to foster a community around the prototype. And uh, at the same time, I will dive deep into the governance and aspect and explore possibility to organize community across cyber and physical space. And the ultimate goal of the research is to establish a holistic governance framework for the concept of DAS. And with the project background, concept and methodology explained, let's now dive into the detail of DAS techno, uh, technical framework. So I laid out design of cyber physical system. Um, there are five main components in this whole system. In the cyber world, they are the front end that user can interact with and decentralized ledger technology. 
on the physical world, they are the user, the back end, and the physical space of no one's one, the prototype. And further identify the basic functionality of each component. The front end is in charge of the user access of the space and data display, further maintenance and community part, uh, participation. And on the smart contract, it controls all the foundings, manage the foundings, and controls uh, the, all the important status. And on the physical world, uh, the user will, can register, can, can be identified, can do simple payments, and use the space, and further participate in the community. The back end controls uh, all the environments uh, of, of the space and uh, do this, all the energy and security control. And the no one's one physical space basically will host all the system above control system and provide an indoor environment for the users. After the components are established individually, the most important test of technical frame, uh, feasibility lies in the communi uh, communication between the components, which means the information flow. Thus, we identified two most crucial information feedback loops within this framework. Uh, the first feedback loop is between the user and the space. It represents how the information from the user um, uh, to the front end and then triggered, uh, trigger the change in the blockchain and the event will uh, change will be listened by the back end and the back end can trigger a change in the physical space. The second feedback loop is not involving the user, it's interaction between just the back end, the space and the blockchain. Um, for example, the energy will be updated every half an hour on, uh, for this system, um, and then the back end will retrieve this energy system from the space every half an hour and then send a transaction to the blockchain and change the status on the blockchain. And these two feedback loops are implemented in the prototype, and let's dive into the prototype. So the first, uh, I will explain a little bit how the prototype is designed. So the prototype, uh, the proposal of the prototype is, is a solar power single user self-only meditation space. And it is achieved by MDP methods, which is minimum viable prototype. And the function of the meditation space is chosen to minimize the functionality, minimize the maintenance of the space. And it also a space that normally shared among communities. So aligning with the concept of sharing economy. The structure of, uh, uh, of the space is a, a simple A-frame food structure. It's designed to be modular, lightweight, and uh, give the possibility to mobilize it. And a simple animation you can see on the right. With the identified uh, function of the meditation space, we looked back to the technical framework. Uh, the main components are listed here. On the front end, there are Angular frameworks, MetaMask, and Web3 technologies involved. And on the smart contract, of course, is Ethereum, Ringkeby Testnet, and the Solidity uh, language. And on the back end, uh, it is uh, controlled by Arduino or a little computer like Raspberry Pi. In the no one's one physical space, it hosts the electrical system, the battery, solar panel, um, electric locks, LED lightings, and a bunch of sensors. Um, uh, then further, this graph shows the functionality that achieved in this prototype. I will not go through the whole list, rather I'd like to stress that the basic functionality of access in the space, energy system control, space security control, and management of foundings are all achieved in this prototype, but the maintenance of the space and community participation will be developed uh, in the future. So let's, uh, let me show you now the result of the prototype no one's one. Um, so on the, on, uh, on the left is a finished constructed uh, prototype no one's one that currently is sitting in student project house in ETH. And on the right, it shows you that when the lighting is on, how it looks um, in the prototype. And then here is a closer look at the IoT system. Um, this, in this little small box, it is populated with Raspberry Pi, uh, battery monitoring system, uh, solar charger tracker, and other electrical system uh, and electrical components. 
And the right top, this picture here, uh, it shows a distance sensor, for example, that uh, will um, sense the, the distance between user and the door, uh, between the sensor and the door, between the sensor and the user. And here, this little um, picture shows that here is a little is a camera that can scan a QR code from the user, and this is the electric lock of uh, of the space. And then I would like to show you the user experience of the prototype in this video. And please note that we create a deposit payment system, so every user, when entering space, would pay a 0.5 ether as deposit, and then remaining money can be redeemed upon exit. That's a complete user experience um, uh, of the space. And of course, because of testing, it was only one minute. And so towards the end of my presentation, I would like to share with you my thoughts on what decentralized autonomous space really implies. Um, on the lower level, uh, DAS means that uh, it is a minimum, uh, minimum administrative cost and trust for AEC industry. And these benefits are result from smart contract automation and transparency of data on the blockchain. And on a higher level, which uh, represented as orange, that's, uh, I believe this concept enabled digital governance coordinated real community, which it enables a power redistribution by digital governance and provide possibility of a balance between participants, institutions, and investors. And further, more importantly, it is enable a non rent uh, seeking entities and it's such as a uh, land and space means that it, we could, for the first time, have uh, maybe a not profit driven efficiency and effective digitalized system that has no ownership and just is just being. And thank you for your time. Uh, if you're interested, please check our website and publications. I'm also happy to connect and answer any questions later. Thank you.